Hi, and welcome back to Overheard at Career Education. My name is Denny. Uh, thank you again for joining me today. Um, if you're not sure what it is, uh, Overheard at Career Education is a new twice monthly outreach from the Office of Career Education. So today I'm actually flying solo. I don't have any fun guests or anyone like that with me today. So it's just going to be me. My apologies. But um, I want to talk about a topic that I found students often wonder about. And of course, I've worked here for about four and a half years. And this is a topic I've had many discussions uh, about with many, many, probably too many to count <laughs> students since I've been here. And that's a topic of, am I on the right path? So you might be asking yourself, how do you know that you're on the right path? Most, if not, not all students ask themselves this, I think. And furthermore, I don't think that it's uncommon to continually ask yourself this uh, the older that you get. Don't assume that you start, you'll start a career one day and that you'll just settle into that and then just work uh, until you retire, gaining promotions, gaining a little bit more money here and there, and that life just won't have any ups and downs. Uh, that's not been my uh, career experience, and I, I rarely, if ever, talk to anyone uh, who has had that experience. So even as a professional uh, that likes his job, I still routinely ask myself that, am I on the right path? So I know students are wondering about that. So I do have a couple of considerations that I think it's important to think about. So number one, how much do you know about what you're getting into? Have you researched things like job duties, education, pay, and things like that? And I talk to students all the time who come into my office. Uh, some have uh, done a lot of research, some amaze me with the amount of research they have done. Uh, some have done little to no research on it. So it's hard to have a full understanding if you have not done some investigation about the career path that you're uh, hoping to head into. Some students, uh, they jump to conclusions maybe after watching a TV show, uh, maybe meeting one person or something like that. I think we tend to see this a lot for things like uh, medical, forensic science, uh, hospital dramas, because there's no shortage of hospital dramas probably for like the last uh, 50 years on television. And I think students watch things like that. I know uh, back when it came out, CSI uh, and, th and things like that were also uh, programs that students would uh, would watch and they, they would decide, oh, hey, I, I want to be a uh, forensic investigator or a murder investigator or a doctor or, or whatever. And it's not that watching a television show or something like that, it's not that that can't uh, inspire you or give you something to think about. But if that's all that you're operating on, it's just what you've seen on television, uh, very little of what happens on television is, I think, truly accurate. Uh, television is written uh, for ratings. So if it inspires you to do some more research, that's wonderful. And I would encourage you to do that. And I'm going to talk about ways to do that here in just a couple of minutes. But if that's all you've done if, is, is watch something on television and decide, hey, I want to do this, that's probably not the best way to proceed. And before you uh, commit yourself to a career, you definitely want to do a little bit more digging than that. We also see sometimes students uh, are pushed toward a certain career by maybe a friend or a family member or something like that. And, and this is a difficult dis uh, discussion I've had with a number of students over the time uh, the times that I, I've worked at Marshall because you, you want to, on one hand, you want to uh, be respectful toward parents and especially we see parents uh, urging students to go into something they perceive as uh, a golden ticket career, uh, something that's going to pay well and have the student uh, theoretically set for life financially. Uh, we've seen it with a lot of medical things. I know offhand uh, engineering is something we see it and, and sometimes even if it's not that golden ticket type deal sometimes you also see it as like a family legacy like oh my dad did this and he really wants me to do this and you know fill in the blank with whatever that is and it can be a little bit of a juggling act because on one hand you want to be respectful to parents uh, parents are older and wiser than you and, and probably me <laughs> as well so you don't want to discount the things they have to say but I tell students too it, at the end of the day you're the one that has to wake up and go to work every day so you want to make sure you're choosing something that you have some uh, some interest in some passion toward and something that's a good fit towards your uh, your your goals, uh, life goals, your abilities, your ambitions, and things like that. 
So some ways you can do that, as I mentioned, I was going to talk to you about this a little bit. If you want to know some ways to investigate, and you should be investigating, uh, I'll go ahead and give you some of the tips that I give students day in and day out uh, in my office. Uh, there's a website called B, B as in boy, bls.gov, www.bls.gov. That stands for the Bureau of Labor Statistics. So if you want to see how quickly an occupation is growing, is it in high demand? Is it shrinking? How much money will I make? What kind of things will I have to do day in and day out? Uh, and a whole bunch of uh, other matters like that. Uh, BLS.gov is a great website uh, to use for investigating, uh, for investigative purposes. We have a few others. If you go to our uh, website, there's another one uh, called uh, What Can I Do With This Major? And if you go to the career education homepage, you go to students, scroll down, What Can I Do With This Major? The website tells you exactly that. Uh, what Can I Do With This Major? Another really great website is uh, candidcareer.com slash Marshall. And if you go there, you can see interviews from people who work in uh, various fields. And it's, it's a really good contrast to bls.gov because bls.gov is very uh, a website like that is very statistically um, centered. It looks at trends, whereas you go to something like Handed Career, you get to see uh, the individual experiences. And I think they complement each other very nice uh, because of that. I've even told students to do things like go to uh, Handshake, which is our new program that we're promoting. Um, or if, if you don't use Handshake, even something like Indeed or company websites could work for this too. Uh, go to any place that has job postings and, and read some job postings. Uh, I'll give you an example. If you think you might want to be a financial advisor, you know, read some job posting for uh, some postings for financial advisors. Is that something that you're getting excited about reading? Or is it kind of like making your stomach turn? Like, oh, I don't know if I want to do this. And if that's uh, that latter of the two, if that's your reaction, and you may want to rethink things a little bit. So that's number one, how much do you know about what you're getting into? Number two, something you want to think about is how are you doing in your classes? Are you doing well in your classes? Uh, now, overall, it's important to do well in about anything you take because your GPA does tend to follow you while you're at school. A higher GPA can uh, open doors that a lower GPA might not. I mean, we always, we've always heard what things like C's get degrees, and you know, while, while that's true, uh, if you have a C average, like a 2, 2.5 uh, in the low to mid twos, a GPA like that, uh, that may hold you back from uh, opportunities that if you had a G GPA over a 3.0 that you might be eligible for. But particularly, you want to think about how am I doing in classes that relate to my major. So if you are, if you're a student and you, and you perhaps want to be a nurse and you're struggling with anatomy, physiology, biology, things like that, if you're an engineering student and you're struggling with some of the mathematics involved in that, and those are just a few examples, I mean, I could go on and on with examples, but if you're struggling in those foundational classes, that could be another red flag that you may want to uh, maybe at least think about the, the path in which you're headed. We do see several students who struggle with that every semester, uh, students who basically like a program, but they struggle in one or more difficult classes, and that makes it much harder to get to that, uh, to finish that degree and to get into that, uh, to get into that field. Now sometimes, I don't know if uh, how many people would admit they exist. I think I think they exist, and I think really we all know they exist. Uh, there are certain classes that are probably weeder classes. Some might even officially kind of be maybe not like when I say official, not on like the schedule of courses, but some might be well known within a department to be a weeder class. Some might be kind of unofficially the, the class that kind of weeds people out. And those, those do exist. And like I said, I think we all know it, whether we <laughs> want to admit that or not. So sometimes it's just a matter of getting through one of those two, a uh, couple maybe difficult classes. If you really uh, like the jobs you'll be doing every day, sometimes you just have to pass one or two difficult classes. But if that subject material is something you're struggling with and it's something you're going to have to use in your job every day, then you may want to rethink that a little bit. Uh, it can be, especially if you're struggling with something that you will have to use every day at work, it can be a sign maybe that field is just not the best fit for you. So there's number one and number two. How much do you know about what you're getting into? And are you doing well in your classes? Uh, you can tell I teach here too. I repeat things. Uh, Repetition is important for learning, so sorry to go all teacher on you. But uh, another consideration here, number three, how do you feel about what you're doing? How do you feel about what you're doing? I've done this long enough to tell when a student is genuinely excited about something or if they're just kind of feigning it, if they're just kind of like, yeah, well, you know, all right, that's okay. I, I can 
tell, I, I believe, if passion is genuine or someone's just kind of like, eh, yeah, this, this is all right for now. So think about this. Do you enjoy talking about what you're doing or what you're going into? Suppose someone asks you, uh, where are you majoring in? What do you hope to do after graduation? Are you genuinely excited to talk about that? Or is it a topic you'd rather uh, avoid? Do you try to change the topic as quickly as possible? Sometimes we put off thinking about uh, tough matters in the hopes that they'll resolve themselves. And it's not just career decisions either. Sometimes in life, just things that we don't want to deal with, we put them off and we put them off and we put them off a little bit more uh, with the hopes they will go away. Generally speaking, that's not a good plan. It's not anything I would ever recommend that a student do. So, so kind of think about it like this. At the end of the day, do you, do you have a, a certain piece about the way that you're headed? Do you have a, a sense, even if you, doesn't mean you don't have questions, but do you, do you basically have a, a, like an inner peace almost that you're on the right path? Or are there some deep-seated concerns, some very uh, grave issues that you're grappling with? Do you, do you really want to find, you know, find some stuff out, figure some stuff out? So those are some considerations for you. Again, the teacher and me will repeat them for you. How much do you know about what you're getting into? Are you doing well in your classes? And how do you feel at the end of the day, in your gut reaction, how do you feel about what you're doing? Now, these aren't the only questions you can ask yourself. I think these are three big questions to ask yourself. So, so then, how do you really know that you're on the right path? Now, uh, I've kind of been leading up to this answer. Here's my, my kind of, I would say, my one sentence answer to, to answer the question that's in the podcast title. I'm not sure you can. What I have presented to you here, these are some signs that can indicate that you're either moving in a correct direction or at least a productive direction. These are signs that can, uh, they can point to the fact that you're moving in a productive direction or maybe uh, point to the fact that you're not moving in a productive direction. Uh, it has to be your decision, though, and I'm not sure that 100% that we ever know for sure. A couple other considerations include the fact that when we talk about the right path, I think that's fairly subjective, and it's ever-changing for all of us as well. Furthermore, you might have multiple right paths that you could be on. You, you might be a talented enough individual that there is actually more than one correct path for you. You might be limiting yourself even to say, am I on the one right path for myself? A couple other considerations as well is don't count on doing the same thing until you retire. Uh, BLS.gov, uh, I told you I love that website, they estimate that uh, especially like, like millennials and Gen Z, particularly people about 40 or under these days, they predict that these people on average are going to have anywhere from three to five different careers before they retire. Now, that's not to say three, four, five different jobs. Uh, that's three, four, five-ish uh, on average different careers. And like, like, let me put that in perspective for you. I work at Marshall University. If, if I take a job at a different university doing the same thing, um, which in case my boss is listening, I'm not planning on doing. <laughs> but uh, if I do that, um, that's a job change. It's not really a career change. Now, if I leave higher education, this is an example I give a lot when I do classroom presentations. Uh, if I leave higher education and I decide to open a restaurant, uh, that'd be a career change because that's very drastically different than, uh, than what I do day in and day out. And uh, Bureau of Labor Statistics estimates anywhere from three to five different careers for uh, millennials, Gen Z, you know, people typically under about 40 at this time. So a couple other things to think about here. We have these conversations all the time. I feel like many per week over career education. So if, if uh, throughout listening to this, if you're like, oh my goodness, I, I need to talk to some people, I need to get some perspective, we are excellent people to talk to about that. Uh, I would invite you to come and talk to us anytime. Uh, you can email uh, career at marshall.edu. So pretty simple, career at marshall.edu. Uh, you can call 304-696-2370 as well to set up an appointment. And you'll be set up with either myself or someone else. We'd love to chat with you uh, about your about your plan. And, and even if you feel 75, 80, 85% sure that you're moving in the right direction, if you just want a little bit of perspective and just a little bit of peace of mind, I've had plenty of those talks with students before. Uh, not everyone who comes in is uh, falling apart and having some existential crisis about the direction uh, in which their life is headed. Sometimes students just, you know, they're almost all the way there. They just need a little bit of reassurance. Uh, and that is definitely something that we can do for you. So and you also want to get in the habit of uh, talking with mentors, professionals in your field. Uh, if, if you can 
meet people like that. Hopefully you are. Hopefully things like networking. And we've covered that before, and we'll cover that definitely in future podcasts as well as Career Ed Live. Uh, Career Ed Live, kind of a side note here, is another outreach we're doing, so stay tuned for more information about that. But uh, mentors, professionals in your field, even friends and family, it's good to talk to them. It's good to get perspective. It's good to bounce ideas off of them because they likely know you, uh, at least especially friends and family, will probably know you a lot better than I will. So even if you come and uh, talk to me, uh, my perspective might fill in some gaps. But the people who know your your traits, you know, your personality, your likes, your dislikes, the people you interact with day in and day out will know you in a way that I will not. So I think talking to as many people as possible, getting as many various perspectives can definitely help you. Uh, nail down the best uh, decision that you can. So your life and your career, here's another piece of advice for you, your life and your career will probably end up looking nothing like what you think it should or will now. And I've, I found that to be true. And again, I, I do presentations uh, for students uh, who come onto campus, and obviously not these days for <laughs> reasons I don't need to explain because it's very obvious. Uh, the last several years, uh, school groups have come in, and I've just kind of uh, informally polled teachers, like, like who, you know, whose career uh, path has looked exactly like they thought it would in high school, undergrad, and rarely, if ever, does anyone raise their hand. So it's, it's, good to, it's a good thing to point out. Your life and your career, there's a good chance they're not going to look anything like you think they're going to. And uh, there's, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. That being said, if you're someone who is, one, resourceful, two, someone who always has a plan, doesn't mean you can't change the plan, but you've, you're never caught without a plan. Uh, someone who's, number three, resilient, and someone who is number four, hardworking. If you're those four things, resourceful, a planner, resilient, and hardworking, even if your plan kind of takes a scenic route, uh, if you're someone who exhibits those traits, good things in life do tend to happen to you. So, and I'm one, I, when I do these things, I don't want to talk about myself way too much because uh, I don't want to look conceited, not to mention I'm just not that interesting. But uh, when I was an undergrad, I, uh, I'll, sh I'll share just like a minute or two of my, of my career path here. When I was an undergrad, uh, I'm, I'm a two-time communication major. I did not do undergrad at Marshall. I did do grad school here. Uh, I did not do undergrad here. But when I was an undergrad, I thought, you know, one day it might be really neat to work uh, in a university setting, but I'm not sure how I would do that. I kind of thought the idea of of being a communications professor would be interesting. I, I really had some reservations about getting a PhD, so I was like, well, I don't know. Uh, I graduated in 2009, and I'm pretty sure I've mentioned that in previous podcasts. Uh, I graduated in 2009. That's when the economy was also uh, pretty bleak, and I was applying for things that I thought I was a shoe in for not getting callbacks. And I, I applied to teach a computer class at a local business college, and I was uh, interviewed and hired the next day. Six days after I applied, I was in the classroom and uh, just went in and every day just tried to teach you know, the class the best I could, learn what I could, tried to give it my all, and they entrusted more and more classes to me. I took a job in recruiting there a few years later, uh, the worst job I've ever had in my life. I, I hated it. Uh, when I was 16, I worked in a restaurant. I liked that a lot better. Uh, then I moved up to a job there that was uh, kind of like the number two in the building. I did things like hiring faculty. I even did documentation for accreditation and stuff like that. And then I, I came to Marshall, and that's uh, that's been 11 years in, in higher ed in some form or fashion. So yeah, it's not the way I thought it was going to happen or not what I necessarily thought it would be or how I thought it would unfold but it's worked out well and, and I like it so so you just have to you know, look for those opportunities and continually better yourself uh, be resilient bounce back from disappointments bounce back from failures uh, have a plan and if you do things like that good things do tend to happen to you so I want to thank you again for joining me today on overheard at career education for this talk about am I on the right path and, and like I said it, it, it might be hard to know but again I'll just reiterate if uh, if you want to ever chat about that more or if you want to get some other uh, perspective on how you know, how are you doing in, in regards to your to your path, uh, come and talk to us over at Career Education. We'd love to talk to you about that. So thanks again for joining me, and I hope to see you back here soon.